changed since the crisis erupted at the border. No policies have changed. No policy announcements have come from the White House. No bills have been passed. But the world's worst over the crisis separating families is getting uglier and uglier. The latest, Trump's former campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski, reacting to a report of a 10-year-old child with Down syndrome being separated from her family. I read today about a 10-year-old uh, girl with Down syndrome who was taken from her mother and put in a cage. Wow, I wow. read about a, a, did you say want want to a 10-year-old with Down syndrome what being I taken from her you mother? Can pick How you dare you? But the bottom How line is very dare clear. you? When you cry, How absolutely dare you, sir? Really. That was yesterday. Here's Lewandowski today. I don't know the young girl. Uh, that Zach reference. I was mocking Zach, a liberal Democrat National Committee activist who was doing nothing but politicizing the issue of making an example of one particular child. Joining me right now, Joe Trippi, CNN political commentator. <coughs> this is what's going on on, on television. CNN political commentator and former senior communication. On an idea kit with DVD plus a $200 discount certificate. fake news. Don't believe these pictures that they're showing you. And I'm trying to tell our audience the White House is giving us 17 different reasons why they're putting forth this policy. I cannot get inside one of those centers. I'm going to leave Texas not having seen a single one of those girls. You, Mrs. Trump, can come down to Texas. You can hold these children. You can see them. You can make a difference. This is about humanity. If being best is your platform, I please ask you to do just that. Hi, I just wanted to tell you that Chevy won a J.D. Power Dependability Award for its mid- ...being held at detention centers near the southern border. Protesters demanding the government end this practice. Steve Harrigan just arrived at a tender care facility in Harlingen, Texas, near the border with Mexico. What are you seeing, Steve? Sandra, the Associated Press first named the existence of at least three shelters for tender age children. That's children, unaccompanied minors under the age of 13. And this is one of them here behind me. You can see it's an ordinary two-story structure like a large house with a playground and some toys out in front run by a nonprofit called Southwest Key based in Austin. Restrictions are severe to get inside, but I just spoke to a pediatrician who has recently toured the facility. She described the following. 15 toddlers in one room, age one to three. She said, in no way can this be called a jail. It was homey, it was loving. The staff seemed comp competent and very dedicated. There were books, toys, cradles, everything you need. And yet, at the same time, this pediatrician of 30 years said it was unlike any room she'd ever been in before with toddlers. It was eerily quiet. The toddlers simply were not making noise, not moving around, and she attributed that to the lack of parents uh, being with them. She said also, perhaps because of restrictions, the staff could not comfort crying children. So she said as a physician, she was just really in agony seeing what she saw there. At least 2,000 children have been separated since their parents, uh, since May when the zero tolerance policy began. There are plans currently underway to expand these type of shelters, even in Houston. Some opposition from the mayor there. The goal of this, according to Health and Human Services, is to try and keep the children and the parents as close together as possible until the legal process works its way through. Sandra, back to you. Steve Harrigan, thank you for your reporting. More on this, Sandra. Sorry about that. Brett Bear, anchor of Special Report. How are you doing, Brett? Good day to you. Hey, Bill. We're getting a lot of news Morning. from John Roberts. We'll see what the president does today. Some sort of executive action, also something crossing regarding Kirsten Nielsen and some recommendations she might make about loopholes with regards specifically to family separation. Go ahead and break right. that. Right. Well, I tell you, this is um, coming to a head quickly because you have a situation where obviously these images, the emotion, the coverage of it is is overwhelming. It's, it's obviously emotional. There are a number of sides to this, as we've explained throughout, uh, but it looks like the administration is looking at either executive action to keep <coughs> these families together or a narrow bill recommended by Secretary Nielsen and DHS that could pass the House as, as soon as today that deals specifically with the loopholes uh, with family separation and going through the process of adjudication along the border. Uh, the question is whether the President does either one of those things, considering that he really wants 
a bigger solution, a bigger bill, which obviously are pending in the House and would have to go through the Senate. Yeah. Um, you were on the Hill yesterday with your show. Uh, you picked up a lot of information. The President was up there at the time and spoke to Mark Meadows and others. I, I guess they could pass something in the House, right? I, I, I don't know what you get in the Senate. Do you have a handle on that? No, and that's really the uh, the variable that you, nobody knows, and, and how long it takes, and how many uh, different iterations you have to go through, and, and you know the Senate is has this arcane process for how many hours it's on the floor. I think there is a sense building shy about his evangelical beliefs, something that at times seems to strike a dissonance to the bombastic president, a self-described former womanizer. But that has not stopped Mike Pence from trying to spread a message of moral integrity. We truly do believe that the effective and fervent prayer of a righteous people still availeth much. It's a time of division. It's it's a time when our nation could use use some grace. But I also encourage you to pray. I'm a believer, and my faith informs me that we're to hold up a godly standard. Uh, I'd encourage you to pray from the wall, ending chain migration, getting rid of the visa lottery, coming up with a, a real long-term solution to the DACA crisis, closing these loopholes for catch and release. But these are some very specific policies we need to come up with and, and approach the problem overall. I think that's what the president wants to do. He doesn't want a Band-Aid or just some little patch to try to get by. But I think the fact of the matter is this is starting to reach a critical mass, and Republicans are going to, and hopefully some Democrats are going to be pushing forward on some solutions of what we can do uh, to actually solve this. Because, again, the zero-tolerance policy at the border is yep. spot on. We should not be allowing people to come into but this Jason, country illegally. Quick thought, but, Jason, yeah, but, Jason, you, he, first he, he attacks the Democrats, saying we don't care about criminals or I mean it, it's just crazy talk and then I mean and then says at the same time but but hey the Democrats have to step up and do something about this while at the same time attacking Ted Cruz's proposal Republican that a lot of Democrats might be able to accept so how in the end and then on top of that you put this policy in place to separate families on purpose to fight for the, you know, basically his leverage to get to the wall. And that's what the president's doing. Everybody knows it. And the language on top of it that Corey's using and that others in the party are using and supporters on the Hill are using doesn't help. It just continues to push women away from him. Forget about the larger politics of the policy of this thing. It's going to hurt in November because I believe Republican women are repulsed by this. Let Not. Alone, Not. Damn. You know, I, I tend to ask this question a lot. I'll ask it again now because of uh, Horowitz's testimony on Monday and Tuesday. Did and that, that is the, the diversion. Has changed because of this testimony and that report? Well, I do. Uh, I do think that, that the text messages and uh, all of the indications of bias uh, throughout the report itself uh, indicate that that it's broader and there is more to come. Mm -hmm. and, uh, for the people who said that that was a nothing burger, they just didn't read it. It's 568 pages. There's a lot. There's a lot in there, and uh, I think there's uh, more hearings and more reports to come. Yeah, yeah, but your point that you just hit on about Horowitz talking about women and they can find bias that led off, that kicked off the Russian investigation, very important. Something we'll hang on to and wait for an answer on. Thank you, Brett. See you at six o'clock. All right.